Deep in Minnesota farm country once lived a man who was as celebrated as he was disliked. He was a lawyer from Granite Falls, Minnesota, I mean, a small town lawyer. That man was Minnesota Congressman Andrew Volstead. But he eventually got interested in politics and uh, ran for Congress and uh, was elected and ended up being the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee. And a hundred years ago, he was at the center of one of the nation's earliest culture wars. It was Volstead's job to write the National Prohibition Act, which became commonly known as the Volstead Act. It enforced the 18th Amendment to the Constitution, which banned the manufacture, sale, and transportation of alcohol. It kind of started almost as early as 1840. I've seen some, some things addressing that. There were people who were really interested in stopping the sale of alcoholic beverages, and especially women's groups got involved. And this is what the turning point was at the turn of the last century. It was the rise in power of suffrage groups like the Women's Christian Temperance Union, or WCTU. They railed against a society of widespread and unfettered drinking, and Volstead supported them. It's an interesting sort of dovetailing of prohibition and suffrage. At the same time, they're kind of, they're both women are starting to find their voice, and basically they didn't want their husbands going to the bars <laughs> anymore. But he wasn't a firebrand. He wasn't like the guy on the front lines. He did give speeches about it, of course, but he, um, he was also kind of doing his job. And so he wrote the act, and it got put into place and it carries his name and he received tons of mail afterwards, some of it supporting and some of it against. But he did receive death threats and things like that. After he died in 1947, many of his papers ended up at the Minnesota Historical Society. He became synonymous with what became an unpopular law. Prohibition led to the growth of organized crime. It was repealed 13 years later. Eventually, Volstead returned to Granite Falls, his final resting place. His house still stands. It's now the Granite Falls Historical Society. He was not a teetotaler. He was certainly someone who would have a drink with someone, but he did not appreciate what it did to society. He was also someone who didn't put on airs. She says he earned the townspeople's respect. Many people villainize him, but there is a lot to him with women's rights and with suffrage and just being an all-around good person to your neighbors that I think we miss out on. That's what I like to let people know about when they come and visit. The house has been restored to what it could have looked like during Volstead's life. There are even some of the family's personal belongings, like the family's dishes and daughter Laura's hand-crocheted purse. One room highlights farm cooperatives, something Volstead championed. The Capper Volstead Act allowed cooperatives to flourish without being subject to antitrust laws. I think this community is very proud of not only Andrew Volstead when he was alive, but now that he's passed on, I think this community is still very proud of him. I'm walking on the Roebling Bridge that stretches across the Minnesota River here in Granite Falls, Minnesota. It was built in 1935 and designed by famed architect John Roebling and Son, who also designed the Brooklyn Bridge. It's just a short distance from Andrew Volstead's house, and it's likely he and his family walked this bridge many times. Signs of Volstead's life here are everywhere, from his church, the building where he had a second floor office, to the local popcorn stand. Even the town attorney, Greg Holmstrom, inherited some of Volstead's old law books. This is the original uh, Minnesota Supreme Court reports, it's printed 1877, and as part of Andrew Volstead's law book collection. Volstead's work on cooperatives lives on. The Blue Nose Gopher Public House is a cooperative and a pub embodying Volstead's dual legacies. What's special about this place is that it is truly a community-owned space. And I always, I've actually been asked, do you think that Andrew Volstead would have approved of a place like this? And I say yes. And I think he would have seen that the value of his work as a, in his cooperative legacy, he would have been really proud of that.